السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وألهمنا بفيض فضلك رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله In this class on understanding the divine names we are looking to cultivate our faith and to cultivate our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the ways that Allah has blessed us with to be able to cultivate our connection to him subhanahu wa ta'ala is through understanding his names and we began last week lesson four by looking at the divine name the peace or the grantor of peace as-salam and today we are looking ta'ala at the divine name al-mu'min and this is one of the names that frequently those who would reflect would be a little bit confused about why because who is the mu'min in our day-to-day -day usage who's the mu'min the mu'min is the believer Right? Is the believer. And that's how we understand Al Mu'min. The Mu'min is the believer. So, how is Allah Al Mu'min? Right? How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the Lord, the Mu'min? So, to understand that, we have to appreciate what does the word Al Mu'min refer to. So, we're going to look bi'idhnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala at this divine name, Al-Mu'min, the grantor of safety, right? the grantor of safety or the confirmer. So the first thing to look at is what does the divine name Al-Mu'min refer to? What does the divine name Al-Mu'min refer to? And Amn in Arabic is safety. Right? Safety. But it is safety from that which is feared. Right? So there's a relationship between as salam, right? salam, which is to be at peace. Right? And peace relates to the things that would cause us to be worried, uneasy. Whereas safety is from fear. Right? And worry and fear are interrelated, but they're distinct especially fear relates to what's coming right? fear relates to what's coming you want to be at peace right? so that you don't have worries but also you don't want to have fears and the mu'min so that's one sense of the the divine name al-mu'min it, it comes from amn which is the safety from fear and the other sense of the divine name al-mu'min in terms of the root sense comes from confirming confirming ammana right ammana right is to give safety but the word mu'min comes from amana, which is to confirm something as true, right? to believe something. But believing something is confirming it as true. It's to confirm it as true. And these are two of the senses of how Allah is al-mu'min, from granting of safety and confirming truth. How? We'll see. Allah's because the fears we have are various kinds. We have worldly fears. We have fears related to our faith. Fears related to our actions. Fears related to our state with Allah. Fears related to the next life. And Allah is the one who grants us safety with respect to all these things. He is Al-Mu'min, the grantor of safety and the, con and the confirmer. And the confirmer. So a comprehensive 
somewhat comprehensive definition of al-mu'min is Allah is the one who grants safety from the fears of this life and the next. And the one who confirms the believer in faith, who confirms the believer in their practice, in their actions, in their state, and in their eternal standing. So, so it is a confirming, putting at rest. It's a comprehensive putting at rest. Allah is the one who puts you at rest. Right. And And there's many relationships between as-salam and al-mu'min, which is why they're mentioned next to each other. Right? So it's almost like as-salam is to welcome you. Right? As-salam, welcome. And now be at rest. You know, that's the amn. Right? So don't, you know, you're welcome and don't worry. That is the salam. And then, you know, feel safe and at comfort. That is Al-Mu'min. And the interrelationship between the two has many aspects to it. Has many aspects to it. So, he tells us, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, right? so that's what the definition is of Allah as the grantor of safety in this comprehensive sense. How do we connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conscious that he is the grantor of safety? It has several components. The first of which is that we must know Allah to be the grantor of safety. Whatever you fear, safety from it is from Allah. So now there are some simple fears. Right? Sometimes there are simple fears. You fear, some people fear cockroaches. Other people fear spiders. Some people fear their boss. Some people fear their spouse, their mother. They fear how their, how their cousin will be even though they invited you for lunch. All kinds of you know, fleeting fears. And then there's the big fears. The big fears of this life. Right? The big worldly fears. Right? There's the small worldly fears, the insecurities, the phobias, the unease. But then there's the big worldly fears. Things that most people would fear from. Fearing for one's safety in a natural disaster. You wake up and hear cracking sounds and the building is collapsing. A true believer, and we know that even the best of people are tested with the heavy tests. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the prophets and the believers with them. Wazulzilu, they were shaken as if by an earthquake until. The, the, the messenger and those who believed amongst them said, when is the victory from Allah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna Truly the victory of Allah is near. But that itself, and that's from Surah Al-Baqarah, right? they were shaken as if by an earthquake until the messenger amongst them and the best believers said, when is the victory of Allah? And Allah says, Ala inna nasr qareeb. Truly, the victory of Allah is near. So, safety, finding safety in worldly fears is not that you don't have fear. Fear is an emotion, right? Fear is an emotion, but it also can be a state. Fear as an emotion is like any other emotion, it's natural. Right? Like, few people, if the roof is collapsing, you'd be like, oh, cool. No, yeah, you, you don't control. Your emotions, the fear comes. The difference between fear as an emotion and fear as your state, right? Is your state. 
how are you? Right? How are you? Right? And the believer can have new ones. I feel afraid, but I am fine. Right? And, we, and by growing spiritually, we are not just our emotions. We don't negate our emotions, but we are not simply our emotions. We are not simply our emotions. Yes, I feel afraid. But I am fine. Why? Because I know that Allah is the one who grants safety from all worldly fears. And it's like that prophetic dua. Reflect on it with me for a moment, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, even the messenger and those who believed amongst them said, Meta Nasrullah, when is the victory from Allah? So they know they have fear, they were shaken and they had the emotion of fear, but they knew where to turn to find safety from all worldly fears. Safety from all worldly fears is by turning to Allah. And if you turn to Allah, what is the divine promise? Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. Truly, the victory from Allah is near. And the victory does not mean that the building won't collapse. Does not mean that your cousin will repeat the same hurtful things that she's mentioned enough times. It won't mean that if you fear that you know the you're cooking for the whole family and it's gonna get you're afraid it'll get burnt, but then you decide to make yourself a coffee and it did get burnt. Or whatever happens, small fears, big fears. In all of it, what the believer finds is that the safety from Allah is in you being ultimately safe from harm. In the believer being ultimately safe from harm. That is the safety. It is not that nothing bad happens. Bad things will happen. The most urgent of bad things is what? Is death. <laughs> you, you know? You know, if you just go with that, I'm going to die. And for some people, that's a worldly fear. For most people, probably. But if you turn to Allah as the grantor of safety, even death. Yeah, of course, some, someone may feel unease about death emotionally. Although the spiritual contentment can very often spill over the emotional contentment. But okay, I'd rather be someone has little kids, has, you know, has parents and family and other people and, and many things depend on them, etc. That's the, the emotion. But spiritually, when we take these fears and we raise them to Allah, we know that He will grant you safety from all these fears. So that is the adab with fears. Raise them to Allah. And they're in the hands of Allah. Part of knowing that Allah is al-mu'min is to have trust in Allah. I can't take care of these fears. I'm going to do what I can, but I leave them to you. And we know that the consequence of that is that they are in the hands of Allah. Hasbun Allah. Allah is our sufficiency. Wa ni'mal wakil. And He is the best of carers, the best of protectors. But that does not mean that the bad things of this life won't happen, but they won't be of ultimate harm. They won't be of ultimate harm. Because you will die. You will get sick. You will experience loss. You will experience disappointment. Right? People will let you down. You will fail. All of that will happen. But none of it, none of it will take you out of the circle of mercy and of good and of eternal safety as a believer. If in all these things, you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no one who's not died. There's no one, typically, who never got sick. There's no one who was never disappointed in relationships. There's no one who never failed. At least apparent failure. Apparent failure. So our positive thinking is not the false, worldly, materialist positive thinking. That everything's going to be fine the way I want it. No. The believer's positive thinking is everything is going to be fine eternally the way Allah wants it. And if it's fine eternally, 
and we know our Lord to be the Lord of mercy, then whatever happens in the meantime, it's like the exam. You'd like a nice exam and you nice like the exam room to be warm and comfortable and, and not to smell funny. But if it doesn't, it's an exam room. We get on with it. Right? So safety from worldly fears. Sim similarly, to know that Allah confirms your faith. The most precious thing you have is, is, your, is your faith and it's very easy to feel conflicted about your faith, confused about your faith. And Allah confirms your faith in many ways. Amongst them, He gives you proofs of His oneness in everything. Allahu khaliqu kulli shay. Allah is the creator of all things. So Allah confirms your faith by Showing to us his signs. Right. Right. On earth are numerous signs for those of certitude. And in your own selves, do you not have insight? So Allah confirms your faith. The things that happen in life, we connect them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We connect them to Allah. So Allah confirms your faith. And when you are Conflicted about your faith, confused, unclear, you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And this is not a doubt. It's not a doubt. It's a question. And as Sayyidina Ibrahim asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for proof of his creating, Allah asks him, do you not believe? He says, indeed I do. But, in, but rather I'm asking in order for my heart to be at rest in order for my heart to be at rest. So when you have those questions, you turn to Allah. You turn to the book of Allah. You turn to the remembrance of Allah. And the truths that you know are true. And the proofs that are clear, that are given to you, should, con con should be a confirmation from Allah of your faith. Because what happens? Sometimes you know, someone, you're, you're sitting on the go train, and two people are talking about some new book by some in strange atheist. And you turn on your, you're turned off your noise hand, uh, canceling headphones, went into transparency mode. And you're like, dang, I shouldn't have done that. But they're speaking openly and out loud. It wasn't a private conversation. They wanted everyone to hear and probably they wanted the hijabi and bearded guys who are sitting nearby to hear most of all. So now, sometimes what happens when we have questions about faith, what do we do? We busy ourselves with the questions rather than seeking the clarity and certitude. How do you do that? By returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like if, if, a wild, if a wild bear is attacking you, you don't run to the bear because it'll get worse. Rather, you seek either protection or defense, right? And when questions arise, you return to Allah or to the signs of Allah or the means that Allah has given us of knowledge, of the people of knowledge, of the books and reliable sources of knowledge to confirm. And the most effective of those is فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Ask the people remembrance in كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't know, just ask. Sometimes what people do, oh, who is that author? And even if you, and you go and check that author and they're, you know, they did use their intelligence in harmful ways for you. But if you were to stop and ask yourself, is it better for me to return to the book of Allah and reflect or to read some random book? I don't know why I'm reading this book. It cost me $45. So don't, right? Confirm your faith by turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of the effective means of that is to reflect on the divine names. Who is Allah? And by knowing who is Allah, those confusions are dispelled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we also turn to Allah in confirming our actions. One of the things that afflicts the believer is self-doubt. Sometimes in modern vocabulary, they call that the imposter syndrome, that I'm a fake. That's one of the things, the shaitan, one of the many tricks of the shaitan. We have a useful on-demand course on the tricks of the shaitan. 
but he pries on our fears and insecurities and says, it's not worth it. You're a fake. You're not sincere. It's probably not valid anyways. No, we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has called us to act right? and told us that he accepts the actions. And But then we know what to do to make our actions acceptable, which is to act on the basis of knowledge, to take care when we act without being excessive, and to strive for sincerity. Okay, so Allah confirms our actions. And that's from His mercy. He is Al-Mu'min, the grantor of safety. He puts you at rest. If you do something, yes, you realize you fell short. But you don't let that creep into self-doubt. Rather, you know you fell short, so the first thing we do after we pray, likewise after anything significant we do, is to make istighfar, astaghfirullah. What is istighfar? I seek Allah's forgiveness. To ask Allah to cover over your shortcoming and to complete the good. So he confirms your actions. But then you have a sense of safety with Allah. But not, and this safety is not that you are safe. No, we're between hope and fear. But you're at rest. That Allah is not going to pull a trick on you. Right? you know, Allah is not going to put a trick on you. It's my duty to remain sincere, to remain striving. But Allah accepts. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. And Allah confirms your state. Very often we may have doubts. Am I sincere? Am I honest? Do I love Allah? Do I fear Allah enough? Do I have enough hope? Do I this? Am I grateful enough? All these fears, what do we do? We raise them to Allah. We ask Allah for the quality and the very fact that you are asking Allah for it means that you have the concern for it and Allah wants you to have it. So you don't second guess. Of course, you always seek an increase in the good, but part of Allah being al-mu'min, the grantor of safety, put your heart at rest with respect to your state with Allah. Your state with Allah in the sense that you, you must continue striving, but don't second guess. Anytime you feel afraid that I don't have enough of any quality, what do we do? Raise it to Allah. Ask Allah for it. Seek and strive. Right? We've talked about this before. There, there's a four-step model for being in a good state, which is seek and strive, repent and rectify. Right? And then repeat. Right? And then repeat. So if you know you feel that you just went and conducted a whole bunch of business transactions and within the community and with each group of Muslims, you, you kind of fake that you're one of them. Then you say, I'm a fake. No, you're not. You're not. You made a mistake, so what do you do? You repent, but be at rest with respect to your state. Why? You're not a prisoner to your past. So let's say, yes, you, it was bad. You shouldn't have pretended to be Sufi with the Sufis and Salafi with the Salafis and modernist with the modernists and liberal with the liberals and irreligious with the irreligious and, and all these things. But rather, you, if you made a mistake, you repent, but then seek, strive, repent, rectify. And you are good. You are dealing with the most generous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He puts you at rest. That He won't take, He, Allah is not an accountant. He's, Allah is not an auditor. He'll say, There's this set of receipts that you didn't have. We had an audit some years ago here at the previous center. And the audit was fine. The main sticking point temporarily was there's a few receipts for some iftars that we hadn't submitted. Alhamdulillah, we had the receipts. But in the whole budget for the time, those receipts amounted to a couple of hundred dollars out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. But that's like what an auditor does. Allah is not an auditor. Allah is the master, the king, the Lord, but he is also the all-merciful. And he tells us, my mercy outstrips my wrath. He has chosen to deal with creation on the basis of mercy. 
Well, Allah confirms your state. All you do is seek the good state from Allah. Seek either the confirmation of the good state, or if you don't have it, ask for it. That's it. And this is one of the things that a lot of people, a lot of sincere people, question about that. Do I love Allah? And that's when the shaitan comes in. Oh, you don't. It's all a fake. You're just pretending. What does it mean to love? He becomes a philosopher if, if you are... Rather, you say, okay, oh, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Oh, Allah, I ask you for your love. And the very fact that you sought to ask is a sign, bi'ithnillah, of your sincerity and of Allah willing to grant. But then, strive accordingly. And Allah confirms your eternal standing in the next life. A lot of people get gripped by fear that I'm going to burn, I'm going to roast. I'm No. Allah is not out to get you. Right? Right? Allah subhanahu wa tells us, Allah invites you, Allah calls you to Dar al Salam, to the abode of eternal safety. Allah invites you to the abode of eternal safety. Allah created our ancestors, Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina Hawa, in paradise because that is our homeland. Our homeland is paradise. And that's where we are supposed to return to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, only called us to obey Him because He has called us to paradise. Allah only made His obedience obligatory because He has made Jannah obligatory for us. Okay? Which is why we don't drag ourselves to our acts of worship, but we say this is the invitation to paradise. So we have a positive state with that. But of course that does not mean, that is, that is Allah's confirmation, but then you have to accept. Yesterday I had two parcel deliveries. We were out of the house. Neither one was dropped off at the house. Why? Because the delivery happened. But you got to open the door and pick it up. So similarly, yeah, this is not saying that, okay, khalas, Allah is the mu'min, so I am safe. No. He grants safety, but you must accept it. Right? Because the mu'min, the mu'min is the one who accepts the truth. And then strives to act accordingly. And then if we realize right, th this reality, then how do we characterize ourselves with this reality? Like how do we behave as servants of al-mu'min, of the grantor of safety? And this can be encapsulated in a beautiful hadith of our beloved Messenger Sallallahu who said, al-mu'minu man salima al-muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadih. The Muslim is the one whom others are safe from their tongue and hands. A Muslim is one whom others are safe from their tongue and hands, meaning safe from their harm. They don't fear harm from them. They don't fear harm from them. So a believer, knowing that Allah is the grantor of safety, the one who protects from fear, strive to be of those who facilitate worldly safety for people individual and collective. And there's many levels of distress and fear that people have be the source of protection from that. How? The, the, the worldly safety, people fear for their lives. Be someone who assists in the preservation of life. Right? One of the ways is give in charity. Give of your time. People fear for their wealth. They fear for from poverty, from material distress. So again, through charity, through concern, through raising awareness, through serving, be someone who helps in the protection of life, in the protection of wealth and poverty alleviation in all its manifestations. People fear also from political harm. Again, be someone who
who is politically aware, who assists with their time, with their money, with their efforts to promote the political good if facilitated. The least is to have concern and to pray for these because one cannot necessarily actively engage in all of these things. But this should, you know, if one has the means, one directs one's charity towards religious good. We'll be talking about that momentarily, but also the worldly good. That the preservation of life, the preservation of wealth, the preservation of the political and social well-being okay, be a source of safety to the environment in yourself, but also through raising awareness, etc. Okay. But then there is also be a source of safety for people in their faith, in good action, and, and spiritual good by being a person who inspires others to, to the good in their faith. By being a person who inspires others towards the path of Allah. Who inspires others towards turning to Allah. Who inspires others to rekindle their relationship of love and gratitude to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ is commanded, Ud'u ila sabili rabbik, call to the path of your Lord. Bil hikmah, with wisdom. Wal mawa'idatil hasana, and by beautiful reminder. The Prophet ﷺ is told to declare, Qul hadihi sabili, say, This is my way. Ad'u ila Allah, I call to Allah, ala basira, with insight. Ana wa man ittaba'ani, I. And those who follow me. So calling to Allah is calling people to what is the source of their eternal safety and good. How does one do that? One does that through knowledge, guidance and counsel. Okay. One does that through knowledge, through guidance and counsel. So we learn. Why do we learn the religion? Number one, for safety for ourselves, but also to be a means of Knowledge, guidance, and count, uh, good counsel to others. Right? One doesn't do this on the basis of ignorance. Right? And also to serve the way of religion with care and concern for the good of others. Right? Right? And that is always a challenge. Right? As Imam al Rifai. Imam Ahmad al Rifai said, the pathways are, of good are clear, but there are, there are few who traverse them. There's few who traverse them. So we should strive to be of those who serve in those pathways of good, because that is also the one who facilitates the good as the reward of those who act upon it. Right? But then there is the reality of being spiritually realized in these meanings, in being spiritually realized in these meanings and this is an, an important component as well right? that how can we have a sense of utter realization that Allah is the grantor of safety and there's numerous aspects to this one is that we should feel utter neediness before Allah why because every need worry and fear we have It's, it's in the hands of Allah. Right? He is the one who fulfills needs, who dispels fears, dispels harms. So we have a sense of utter neediness with Allah that every need that we have, Allah will take care of it. But take care of it not in the way you want, but in the way that He wills eternally. So it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Right? That you may not get the answer that you want in the here and now. Jack says, to, Jack says, Oh Allah, marry me to Jill. She says, no. Was his dua not answered? No. Because Allah will fulfill that dua as he wills. And it's eternally fulfilled as 
reward eternally with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask for good health does not mean that you will have good health. Are the dua of the dying answered? They died. Yes, they're answered. Why? And we should be at complete rest with that. We should have the coolness of certitude. You are in the safety of Allah. The safety of Allah is, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me, I will answer you. But how? Not in the way that you wish, but in the way that he wishes. In the way that he wills. Not in the time that you wish, but in the time that Allah wills. But with a certain guarantee that he answers. And the answer is eternally manifest for you. You just have to have iman. You must be a mu'min, a person of faith. That in nawa'ad Allahi haqq. Right? Indeed, the promise of Allah is true. So do not be deluded by this worldly life. And do not be deluded by the whisperings of the devil. So we have the coolness of certitude. And it's sometimes good to, to think, ideate. That okay, what if I, I, I'm sick, I made dua for health. Now you should be hopeful of health. But what if I don't get healthy? Does it mean Allah did not answer my dua? No, we have to have the coolness of certitude. He only inspired you to ask because he has willed to answer. In the way that he wills and the time that he wills. It may be manifest in this life, but it is certainly going to be manifest in the next life. In this life, Allah will give it to you either by what you want or similar to what you want or prevent harm from you to that extent. Or store it up as reward eternally. When the believer sees the reward of the du'as that did not appear to be answered in this life, the believer will ecstatically utter, Oh Allah, why did you answer my du'as in this life? And sometimes you don't know what's good for you. There's many people who got married, they have failed marriages. And that ended up being excellent for them. Because it, that was the catalyst that made them turn to Allah. I have a friend who, and real story, this is not a Jack and Jill story, it's a real story. He married the love of his life. She'd converted as well. She converted, but then her parents became fanatical born-again Christians. And they put so much pressure on her that she left Islam and she declared him a terrorist. So the security services of his country attacked his house. And he's quite emotionally sensitive. And most people would be a bit shattered, I guess. Um, they attacked, like the paramilitary security services, whatever, anti-terrorism, etc., with machine guns, bro the whole, like, some kind of, like, movie scene. And he spent a few days. Then they had to let him go and give him a settlement as well. Now, you don't know that what you ask for is good for you. We had a family that used to come here at Seekers who asked Allah so much for a child and they hadn't had a child for over a decade. When they had a child, they had, two ch they had three children in two years, twins and another child. And they had to induce coma to have one of the deliveries. Um, the sister was airlifted to hospital. Since then she's had major health issues, etc. Sometimes we don't know what's good for us. Right? So even one of the adab of asking Allah is not we ask Allah repeatedly, but out of need, but we consign matters to Allah with certitude that al khair fi Allah. The good is in what Allah chooses for you. Sometimes you may make a demand, and it might not be the right thing for you. You may love a thing, and it's harmful for you. And you may dislike a thing, but Allah places in it great good. So this is one of the aspects, right? And this is how you find the coolness of certitude, to know that Allah, that things are in the hands of Allah and He, the consequences of all things for the believer are ultimately good. So that's being realized in this meaning. Finally, calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the name Al-Mu'min, we can incorporate this into our dua, but 
call upon Allah when you're in fear, but with the coolness of certitude. Don't call upon Allah with unease, with fear. Oh Allah, I have an exam tomorrow. Uh, please make me pass. I mean, or even more with demand. Oh Allah, make me pass. Otherwise, otherwise what? The Lord is the Lord and the servant is the servant. And even if you're working in a company, you're, you're working for Microsoft and you say, um, please change the settings on, on your AI app. Otherwise, otherwise what are you going to do? <laughs> That's like you within a corporation. This is you with the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Like you don't have a right to demand. Allah out of his mercy has given you the right to ask. And he has called upon you to ask and promised you that he will answer. Your own company won't answer you. Very often your parents won't answer you, right? I mean, I'm my parents are really cool, but, you know, everyone may refuse you on at least some things, but Allah won't refuse you on anything, but on His terms. And His terms are ultimately eternally better for you. Because He is both the most merciful and the most wise. So we call upon Allah with this when in fear, but we call upon Allah in need and certitude and contentment. We don't call upon Allah with, with fear that what will happen if this isn't answered. No. Also, we don't demand, Oh Allah, you better is an accusation of Allah that I'm not sure that you're the most merciful. You don't call upon Allah to remind Allah, Oh Allah, tomorrow I have an exam. Right? It's like somewhat asked my mother that such and such thing has happened. Can you please recite 42 Surah Yaseen? And my mother says, my, my, my Allah is the most merciful. I don't trade with Allah. I don't go into negotiations with Allah. Okay? Right? Of course, you, you know, I'm pretty sure she recited the Yaseen several times, but it, you, know, you don't have a transactional relationship. If it's a merely transactional relationship, okay, I'll do this, but you better do one, two, and three. He is the Lord. That doesn't happen in any other relationship. Right? So why would it happen with Allah? Right? Why would it happen with Allah? Right? And then seek all safety, worldly and next worldly, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All that you fear in your life, in your relationships in your work, in your aspirations, and all that you fear with respect to the next life and the means you're taking from it with respect to faith and actions and your state with Allah, all of it, seek it from Allah. And as our beloved Prophet wasallam said, Allah min fadlih. Ask Allah from His generosity, from His bounty. Ask Allah from His generosity and his bounty. And as Ibn Atayla Sakandari says, لا تتعدى نية همتك إلى غيره Do not let your aspiration or resolve turn to other than Allah. فالكريم لا تتخطاه الأمال Because the most generous, even the highest of hopes, cannot outstrip his generosity. So, Part of the last thing we can mention about this divine name is all that you seek, seek it from Allah, all that you fear, raise it to Allah with the complete certitude. But also Allah is the one who confirms truth for you. Imam Ibn, Ibn sorry, Imam Abu Hassan al-Shadili gave advice to the people of knowledge in this regards. He said, لا تنشر علمك ليصدقك الناس Do not spread your knowledge so that people accept you. That they confirm you. وانشر وانشره ليصدقك الله Rather spread it so that Allah confirms you. Allah accepts you. So that is why we should do things as well. That if Allah is the confirmer, seek confirmation only from Allah. 
seek confirmation only from Allah. Whether in your knowledge, in your teaching, but also in your service. That's one of the reasons why service is difficult. When you serve, rarely do people say Jazakullah. They, they, they may say it on the spot, but do they really appreciate it afterwards? No. You serve in the masjid. You know, they ask you to join the board, then they'll kick you out and say, you know, she was trying to do this and that. A friend of mine was accused of trying to steal the elevator of the masjid, right? <laughs> which is one of the most ridiculous things. But, you know, all doesn't matter. Because if you're doing it for, for Allah, you give in charity. And you didn't announce it, but they announced. Jazakallah khair for so-and-so for giving this donation. And all people said, look, he just seeks status. Seek confirmation only from Allah. When you act, but also when people respond. It doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter. And it's sufficient for us to see the examples of the prophets. Right? They were accused of all kinds of things. But if you are true with Allah, what other affirmation matters? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be true servants of Al-Mu'min, the grantor of safety and the confirmer and the confirmer wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam we will continue bi ta'ala by looking at the divine name al muhaymin right the all all controlling and all aware walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin we have a few questions here that um, we can take, and if people have questions, feel free to, to ask. Um, so, one, one of the questions, I suffer from these thoughts. We train ourselves. Whenever you have a fear, whether worldly or related to our faith, our practice, our state with Allah, or relate to the next life, raise the matter to Allah. The very fact that you sought it from Allah, then you should feel at rest that you will be granted it. But then you just have to, <laughs> you have to just answer the door. Okay? And Allah does not just ring three times. Allah keeps ringing us in, with reminders you know, to pick up the parcel. Right? Um, And there's a statement that it's hard for me to keep listening to you because I'm still stuck on that last story. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, there's a question regarding um, a very particular context in a particular community. The thing to do with, you know, with local matters is first to, to go to the people of knowledge, the people of uh, experience in that community to address that matter. Sometimes we might not be seeing the wisdom and purpose of something. Um, and sometimes you know, people are receptive to feedback. And if they're not, our duty is to be of good counsel out of sincere concern. If we do that, we've done our responsibility. Um, okay, so those were the main questions. Right? So the, the, the key meaning of the divine name, Al-Mu'min is the grantor of safety from all fears, worldly, next worldly, religious, and we should strive to be people who grant others safety. It also has the, and we looked at the implications and then, 
um, it is also it also means the confirmer of truth, right? So whatever truth you have, seek confirmation of it only from Allah. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين